Welcome to this sample audio clip, which comes from the series entitled Multi-Hull Conversations with Jim Brown. In this recording, Jim speaks to small trimaran sailor and self-boat builder, Frank Smoot. Frank shares how he got into making his own homemade trimarans. And in the full audio, Frank talks about some of the techniques that he uses to create boats that are both lightweight and strong, yet inexpensive as compared to typical boat building costs. You can find out more about this historic audio series at www.outrigmedia.com. we're speaking with Dr. Frank Smoot, who is uh, um, a very modern multi-hull pioneer. Good morning, Frank. <laughs> Good morning. I, I, this is great. You know, to, to be even considered a multi-hull pioneer, uh, I'm such a Johnny-come-lately, you know, compared to the legendary Jim Brown. It's just... Uh, oh, know, come on. A, we all stand on the shoulders of others. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I got some pretty big shoulders to stand on. I don't feel like I have developed any yet. Well, I do too. Um, and uh, the remarkable thing about your work that uh, impressed me immediately was that uh, um, you reminded me, your work reminded me so much of the uh, 1950s uh, experiments that were being conducted by Arthur Piver when I first got to know him back there in California. And so well, I, I, I think I might still be stuck in the 50s in a sense <laughs> because I just don't know anything. I mean, I, I came into this uh, three years ago was the first time I had ever sailed, believe it or not. Uh, I had a background in construction, but I knew absolutely nothing about sailing or boats. And if you look at my early uh, ventures, I think that they will prove that to be true. Well, you neither did Arthur Piver. Uh, yeah, uh, not about it, little boats. His first boat looked a lot better than mine. Um, if well, you like, I don't I know. Give... The spirit was the same, Frank. That's what, uh, when I saw your boats a couple of years ago at Cedar Key, um, uh, I, I, you and your wife both had your own boats. It was, uh, it was a, a wise thing so that you don't have uh, a, a crew of two. <laughs> Any, anyone can go anywhere he or she wants. Yeah, but she doesn't, uh, like to, she doesn't like to sail close to me. She's a very independent spirit. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, that's like uh, that's like uh, people in in double kayaks. You know, very often couples will decide to buy a, a, a two place kayak and go paddling together. And uh, it's not long until <laughs> often the the gal will want her own kayak because there's this guy behind her with a big paddle and a big ego, you know. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Well, if, if you like, I could give you just a general idea how I got into this. Yeah, please do. Well, <clears throat> we started actually in kayaks. My my uh, my wife had never done much recreationally, and we only got married about three years ago also. And uh, I had a kayak, a uh, little 14-foot uh, wilderness uh, pungo, you know, a little plastic tub kayak and uh, I'd like to take it out in the Gulf and all this sort of thing uh, living here near uh, Tampa Bay there's so many places to go out in the water and my wife uh, moved down here and we got married and she had gotten her own kayak and because I like mine she got the same one so now we had two identical kayaks well one day I was out uh, sailing in the Gulf paddling along doing uh, my maximum of about six miles an hour and feeling great and this guy came screaming by me in what I later discovered was a sunfish. And he was doing nothing. He was sitting still, expending no effort at all, and going much faster. And I thought, well, I'm going to go catch this guy. Well, I couldn't get anywhere near him. There was no chance. So immediately I got frustrated, and I said, well, you know, I want to do that too. I want to be able to sail. I want to be able to sit back and do nothing 
and have the boat go fast, which is sort of sort of my prime directive. I don't like to do anything but sit. And when I heard your term armchair sailing, that was just really uh, that just hit the nail on the head. That's what I wanted. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm 66 years old, and maybe at half my age, I would like to hike out, but. I wanted a stable boat at this point that I didn't have to do anything but sit. So I took these two, these two kayaks and uh, sort of lashed them together with this very crude wooden framework and bought a horribly made 55-square-foot lateen sail online, uh, just the flimsiest thing you ever saw, and uh, rigged up a rudder and... Uh, didn't even know about centerboard, so I didn't have one. Uh, I knew you'd have to have a rudder, but the whole centerboard thing was a mystery. So I went out sailing in that, and it was kind of okay, but it, it it didn't want to turn, and it certainly wouldn't go upwind. And you know, as long as the wind was behind me somewhere, it would go okay. And when the wind blew really hard, the the lee uh, kayak would nose into the water and pretty much stop the whole thing. So. I thought, okay, this isn't, this isn't too good. Uh, so I went on to, from there, to try and design my very first boat, which actually ended up looking more like a parade float because of my background in construction. Uh, <laughs> I built it kind of like a wall. It was just incredibly overbuilt, too heavy, dead flat on the bottom, except for what you might call a toboggan front end that just turned up a little. And... Uh, the whole thing was eight feet wide and 16 feet long, and it, it was in all these pieces. It was just a joke. I mean, if you went on my website, you would see what a what a pathetic first boat this was. What is your website address? Oh, it's uh, www.diy, as in do it yourself, dash tris for trimarans dot com. www.diy dash tris dot com. And the Great. whole, the whole uh, tawdry history of my boat building over the last three years is in there. You can just you can see that just the, the pathetically bad boats I made in the beginning. Um, so this first boat was just so heavy, and we had ended up buying a uh, a better sail and a mast to go with it from uh, a fellow up in New England. It was 85 square foot sail and we were finally getting it. It looked so huge when we first, you know, laid it out. I thought, my God, how are we going to handle anything this big? Um, you know, I just, I didn't know. And so the mass that came with it, uh, unfortunately, was very soft pine. And I guess it was designed for the little dinghies, uh, monohulls. So anyway, this uh, n now we had a bigger sail and a, a, a real mast, but the mast was... Uh, kind of soft pine, and it certainly was not uh, designed for multi-hulls, as I later found out. So we got out there on a breezy day in my uh, my homemade boat with the dead flat bottoms that didn't heal at all, and so the mast just snapped, just <laughs> like a matchstick. It just snapped right off, and the, the sail was laying over, and here we are out in the middle of nowhere, and both of us are trying to paddle to get back to shore, and that was a that was probably my first really unpleasant uh, experience with the, the boat, so I thought we needed a better mast. Uh, you know, I should preface this by saying that we we originally had bought a, um, we wanted to just get a little mono hull to see if we actually liked sailing. And what we ended up getting out of Craigslist was uh, a Laser 2. No. Oh. Um, <laughs> If, if there's any place not to start sailing, it's probably a laser too. Um, it's the tippiest. It's a it's a high performance little boat, but man, it just takes nothing at all to dump it. So uh, we, being zero experienced sailors, took it out on a local lake, and I'd say within five minutes of launching it, we were upside down. Um, well, that's that old compromise, Frank, between uh, stability and performance, and it relates to many things in life, including relationships. <laughs> Boy, no kidding. That was that was pretty pretty testy. Actually, she was a lot calmer than I was. I was uh, uh, good. I was panicky. You know, I'm not a great swimmer. And uh, uh, anyway, so I did 
ultimately get the thing righted by standing on the center board. And uh, I discovered I did the dagger board. I discovered I did not want a mono hull at that point. And she <laughs> certainly wasn't going to go out in another one. So this this kicked off a little series of catamarans at first. Um, but there's something about the catamaran configuration I just didn't like, and I wasn't sure what it was. But I thought, you know. I'm going to take my I'm going to go back to my kayak and I'm going to put some little outriggers on it and see what that does. Cuz it was the the whole catamaran thing the boats had gotten bulky and heavy and it was just too darn much work to take the pieces and assemble them on the beach and push them out into the water and you know all this do the whole thing in reverse when we came back. Um so I made a couple of little um outriggers almost for my kayak and I made a homemade 40 square foot sail and that was a lot of fun. I have to say it was it was just an absolute blast. Thanks for listening. To obtain the complete audio, please visit us on the web at www.outrigmedia.com.